We begin this hour zeroing in on two mass shootings that have rocked U.S. communities. The massacre at a Colorado movie theater, and just days later, a gunman opens fire at a Sikh temple in Wisconsin. Both cases tragic, unsuspected, and unthinkable. But for the most part, they're seen as isolated incidents. In both cases, the suspects are young white males, not the typical face of terror, but someone may have seen this coming. A former DHS analyst, Daryl Johnson, wrote a report titled Right-Wing Extremism, Current Economic and Political Climate Fueling Resurgence in Radicalization and Recruitment. Many on the right criticize it as politically motivated fear-mongering. Right-wing extremists here in the U.S. <laughs> This is a funny story. What is this? No, this is this is uh, this is left wing. Uh, I'd like uh, to tell just, it. Oh my God, they, they're nuts. Does that mean they're going to be spending sending spies to these uh, tea parties? There are no Timothy McVeighs out there right now. If they're going to issue these reports uh, for this made-up threat, conservatives as posing a bigger threat to this country than Al-Qaeda terrorists naming veterans groups as possible extremist groups targeting veterans. Well, his career was essentially over because the administration did not support his findings. So while homegrown terrorism appears to be on the rise, why isn't the media recognizing this dangerous trend? To discuss this is Brian Doherty, senior editor of Reason magazine. He's also the author of the book you see there, Gun Control on Trial. Brian, welcome. So uh, right-wing extremism does, in fact, appear to be on the rise. Why are people acknowledging that? Um, I'm not sure exactly what you mean by right-wing extremism. And the problem that people had with that DHS report we were talking about is that it combined what we could call hate groups, the kind of groups that uh, Paige, the, uh, the Wisconsin shooter, uh, appeared to be a member of, and people who merely had political opinions that the government didn't like, and quoting from the report itself, uh, things like rejecting federal authority in favor of state or local authority, or rejecting government authority entirely. It, it, it's illegitimate, especially for law enforcement, to mix together a set of ideas and label it as, as terroristic or criminal. And I question whether one incident uh, of one guy with links to these hate groups killing people uh, justifies you saying that there is a dangerous trend uh, that there's some need for the government to come back. I do want to read you, Brian, a, a quote from that report. It states, quote, threats from white supremacist and violent anti-government groups during 2009 have been largely rhetorical and have not indicated plans to carry out violent acts. Nevertheless, the consequences of a prolonged economic downturn, including real estate foreclosures, unemployment, and an inability to obtain credit, could create a fertile recruiting environment for right-wing extremists and even result in confrontations between such groups and government authorities similar to those in the past. Uh, what, do you make, what do you make of that, Brian? Um, I, I, I think the first part is the most important part, uh, that there is not actually a lot of evidence and there's certainly no actual cases, except for this one that just happened, of people connected to what they're calling right-wing extremism. So again, I think that's very dangerous to mix these political ideas with racial hate ideas. Uh, but at any rate, um, there's not one guy has finally freaked out, snapped, killed a bunch of people. I don't actually see how that justifies a policy solution. And this is the same thing uh, that I was talking about on RT after the Aurora shooting. I think people, in their attempt to make sense of the senseless, uh, try to reach for these national solutions to things that are bizarre individual outlier problems. Hello, everyone. Welcome to GGN. Um, today is Friday, August 10th, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com and ddarko2012, and my backup channel is ddarko2013. And if you'd like to help me out, you can donate to GGN right there on the website. Okay, just one quick uh, thing I noticed about this video, this RT video. I have noticed some have been saying, oh, RT, they're propaganda. Well, they're all propaganda, right? I'm just trying to cut through some of the bullshit of this propaganda. But like someone said, RT is really sucking right now. Well, they're right. I've noticed a big drastic change in RT. And they, they put this video out originally. Only Muslims deem domestic terrorists. Basically, you know, Whitey's the new terrorist, the new face of terror. And they actually have this, this individual on there, Daryl Johnson. 
and it was just a complete hit piece. I couldn't believe it. And they changed it. They, they, they changed the whole thing. I can't find the video. And now they put this libertarian guy on there, um, Doherty. So uh, very sneaky stuff going on with RT. Um, you know, I wanted to put that video out there just because of what this guy was saying. I mean, it was just it was just totally ridiculous, right? I mean, we all know the same um, M.O. Uh, this guy was on there, and he was bas basically saying, oh, I'm right. Oh, see, I was right. And right now in all the mainstream media, they're saying, oh, this guy, you know, he warned him. He was right, right? So DHS crushed this analyst for a warning about far-right terror. So Daryl Johnson spent 15 years studying domestic terrorism groups, particularly white supremacists and neo-Nazis as a government counterterrorism analyst. And one of the things I noticed is that they're lumping all these different groups, sovereign citizens, uh, white supremacists, neo-Nazi skinheads, um, when there is an actual, I guess you could say, movement that's out there, uh, they're called white supremacists, that leads that they're, means that they're skinheads when they're not, uh, like these people right here. Uh, it goes back to um, white European history and paganism, basically pre-Christianity, um, and they're just proud to be white. It doesn't mean that they're going to go out and start killing people. So they saw this tattoo of the old cross and that on this dude, uh, this individual that went in there and, and shot up the, these Sikhs in the temple. And they automatically um, label those people as um, basically killers, right? So, And then also they lump all these conservatives um, who want small government to have a real, a real uh, basically grievances to be aired uh, with the federal government. And because the United States has become so uh, pushed to the left, I mean, yes, it's. I know about the whole left-right paradigm, and I know that there is somewhat of a, um, a competition that goes in the markets, but that goes back to communism and the trading blocks to give the illusion of, of, uh, of, of free trade and competition and stuff like that. But it's pushed to the far left. Um, you have Zionists pushing uh, these types of um, far left things, such as you know open homosexuality and and uh, uh, Christians uh, funding through tax dollars abortions and stuff like that. And so you get these things called anti-Semitism, which is basically uh, anti-Zionist. Uh, you get far right extremists, which are basically uh, people that are not for the far radical left. So. And one of the things that he mentioned in this uh, RT video, this uh, Johnson, was what? The election of a first African-American puppet, right, uh, is going to fuel racist, uh, you know, racism and stuff like that. Uh, when, in fact, uh, Obama is actually more white than he is black, and he serves really rich uh, white people in Wall Street. So, But I knew before Obama was even elected that his purpose was to divide up the country. If you look at uh, uh, Barack Obama, the postmodern coup written by Webster Tarpley, he goes in there and talks about how he is there to divide America. So they have this whole thing planned. I mean, I almost feel like it's almost premature, this whole right-wing extremist thing that they're coming out with, um, because they've been pushing this, for, at least in my eyes, since I've been aware of this stuff, you know, since 2008, uh, uh, that it's been escalating more and more and more. And I'll show this in this uh, video, in the next video maybe, um, but after this incident in in uh, the Sheik the Sikh temple uh, in Wisconsin, I noticed that they've kind of just right off the bat they've come with this prepackaged Daryl Johnson inter uh, guy coming out there, and now all of a sudden you have Congress saying, well, we got to do something about this this domestic terrorism. So they're ready to legislate something, and that's what that other individual, Mr. Doherty, was talking about in that in that first video. Yeah, and he also talked about uh, right-wing extremists attempting to recruit and radicalize returning veterans. They're talking about veterans that are just uh, that swore north of the Constitution, that did whatever they had to do, and they're just disgruntled when they come back. And it's, uh, it's the interesting thing that I noticed too is um, is that they try to separate these oh the terrorists right oh the uh, the brown Muslim terrorists right, and then you have oh the white domestic terrorists. Well, the funny thing is is that both of those groups usually tend to uh, 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 figure out what, who is the real terrorist, the new face of terror. And I could say, what, the Zionists, right? Behind 9-11, blew up their own people in Bulgaria to crack, to blame it on Iran, and were most likely responsible for killing millions of their own people and uh, blaming it on white people and Europeans in order to create their own state. So these people are very dangerous in my view. 
Uh, it's not the people, the other, most uh, people that they're talking about that they're targeting are uh, mostly peaceful people that aren't going to carry out violent acts. In fact, it's usually the federal government that co-ops these uh, lone individuals um, that are willing to carry out violence. They are not the majority of this group. Uh, it says here, Southern, Property, Southern Poverty Law Center's POTOC calls out Obama regimes uh, for its political cowardice on domestic terrorism. This is from June 2011. So yeah, that's right. Uh, they agree uh, with their ass assessment of the Obama regime's disastrous failure to take right-wing domestic terrorism seriously. They're discussing the report in the Washington Post on ex-Homeland Security analysis, Daryl Johnson raising the red flag on the issue. Yeah, so the Ed Schultz and Poltock, or Potok, they both agree with this, uh, this report. Domestic terrorism by members of extremist groups, a serious threat, says the FBI. So this is going off what I was saying before. Uh, we need legislation, you know, it's always the problem, reaction, solution. So they've been convinced for a while that terrorism from extremist domestic organizations is just as dangerous as terrorism from foreign organizations. But efforts by authorities to de be able to detect and preempt violent extremists have faced serious legal and political hurdles, including free that pesky thing called free speech uh, guarantees and pushback from political lobbies suspicious of government motives. Documents collected by the National Security Archive uh, say in this FBI report from 2004 that right-wing terrorists pose a significant threat due to their propensity for violence. Many of these groups sprang after 9-11 when they imposed the Patriot Act, which is sitting there waiting for problem reaction solution to come out and strip uh, uh, Americans' rights. So what is the real terrorist threat in America? Well, I'll tell you, right-wing extremist terrorism is deadly a threat as Al-Qaeda, which is made up by what? Uh, Israel and the United States and the intelligence community. So they have their own private terrorist organization. And then they blame it on uh, Muslims who they uh, recruit who are just, I don't know, dumb or something like that because they don't realize that they're actually working for the same group that they're actually trying to fight. But this is from the New Yorker, this article, and this one was from CNN. The word terrorism in the United States usually brings to mind plots linked in some way to Al-Qaeda. While the danger posed to the public by white supremacists, anti-abortion extremists, and other right-wing militants is often overlooked. So they go on there and start talking about how this guy was a uh, supposed Nazi. And they said a particular concern for law enforcement is the sovereign citizens movement uh, whose adherents reject all U.S. laws as well as taxation and American currency. They said the lone offender sovereign citizen extremists have killed six law enforcement officers since 2000. That's when they encroach on their property, right? That's when they go in their car and they try to steal from them or detain them, i.e. kidnap them, uh, for not handing over their property. And that's usually what it, what happens there. Because the cops, when they hear when they start being challenged with the uh, uh, legal terms, they themselves don't know. I've encountered the suit. They don't actually know what the laws are. They just say, well, I'm in charge, and you're going to listen to my authority. I mean, that's seriously how they roll. And the other funny thing is that they call them sovereign citizens, which they these individuals hate to be called that because they are not fucking citizens. So why would you call them a sovereign citizen? Just goes to show... Not uh, there's not really too much thought that goes into the um, into the uh, issues, right? The depth of these issues. They just kind of slap it out there and put a nice little ribbon and package it together and give it to the American sheeple to gobble up and be, ooh, I'm so scared. Oh, the brown people are gonna get me. The white people are gonna come get me. Oh my God, the Chinese are coming. Now this is the swine flu, right? Federal investigators treating Sikh temple shooting as domestic terrorism. Based on his background and the tattoos on his body, it's too you know it's too bad too that um, you know there was three other individuals that were in, probably involved, according to witnesses that were killing people and they'll never be found. Do you think they're going to have tattoos on them? Oh no, no they won't. In fact, they probably have dog tags, or no names. See, those are the other types of sovereign citizens, those that are in black ops that don't actually have names. See, they're allowed to do that because they're working for the state. So the feds are treating this temple shooting as domestic terrorism. The question is, is have we turned a blind eye to domestic terrorism? This is from time. All the same news cycle. In the United States, some types of hate are more tolerated than others. A good example is the Chick-fil-A. Uh, these people that um, want to promote um, gay rights and all that stuff, that's good and great. But they actually hate people for speaking up and saying, well, you know, I don't necessarily support that. So they hate them. And that's tolerated. 
join me in part three.